to start today. So we're going to jump right into music. I'm going to start actually with a setting that is is really appropriate all year round, but I think of it for some reason, especially around the holidays, which is Hannah Senesh's text um, that actually is called uh, 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 originally a walk to Kazaria. Some of you have been to Israel, have been to Kazaria, um, but most people know this poem as a Lee, a Lee. As those are the first words of the text. And there's a very, very famous melody um, by the composer David um, Zahavi that we many of us know that goes, Eli, Eli, Shalom. But Hannah Senesh did not write that melody. Somebody took her poem and then later set that melody. So I thought I would share with you a text. Um, sometimes we use it at Yiskar on Yom Kippur. Uh, uh, a musical setting by a colleague of mine, Cantor Rochelle Nelson, who's in the Miami, Florida area. And she wrote a beautiful melody that also I think suits this text just so perfectly. So I'm gonna share a little bit of a new Ailey Ailey with you. Very sweet, sweet melody, I think. Um, so last week we were talking about the Kol Nidre service and some of that liturgy. And there's so much liturgy that is truly unique to that service. I would say maybe of all of the services that has some of the most uh, liturgy that's unique. Uh, Arab Rosh Hashanah, for instance, um, just has a few little pieces that are specific to that service. But perhaps the most iconic part of our Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur service is the section we call Vidui. Vidui is our confession. And of course we call Yom Kippur, we translate often as the day of atonement, right? This is in many ways what this whole holiday is about. On Rosh Hashanah, we declare God's majesty. We establish what our relationship is to God, our understanding of God's majesty, of God's uh, sovereignty, 
and of our mortal nature. And that helps us establish then when we come to Yom Kippur, our understanding of why we need to ask for forgiveness and what that relationship is about. So this vidui, this part of the service really becomes that centerpiece, that moment that is challenging because it really forces us to really do a lot of inward work. Uh, many of you know, we read usually lit several litanies of sins that we may have committed. Some of them we understand we personally did not commit and others often op pique our interest a little bit and think, hmm, I hadn't thought maybe I, maybe, maybe that is one I should reconsider this year. So sometimes it's good to have so many choices because things jump out at us year after year of different ways that we might relate. The Vidui section opens with a very traditional prayer uh, that we call Tavo Lefanecha. And um, it also is a great sort of theological setting of setting ourselves up for understanding why it is we would even need to repent or confess our sins. The text reads, our God and God of our ancestors, may our prayer reach you. Do not ignore our plea. For we are neither so brazen nor so obstinate as to claim before you, oh, God of our ancestors, we are so righteous and have not sinned, right? So interesting that we kind of have to put that out there. Like, like maybe God is having like some doubtful thoughts about us that maybe we're not really going to be as honest as we want to be. So we want to say, God, please understand that's not us. We are not going to be those people who say, oh, not me. I didn't do any of these things. Rather, we are here to say, indeed, we have sinned. We have gone astray. We have transgressed. And ultimately, what does that say for Jews? It says, we can do better. We have room for growth. We are ready to look at the new year as an opportunity to strive harder, to find areas of growth, to be a better person. Because we are not so brazen to say, not me. We know we each have room. So I share this setting by the um, composer Max Janowski, uh, probably most famous for his Avinu Malkeinu Shema Koleinu, which I will not be singing now. But if you come on our Rosh Hashanah, you'll get to hear it. This is Tavo, his setting of Tavo Lefanecha. And what's kind of interesting about it, if you listen really carefully, so here's your challenge. He actually incorporates a little bit of the motif of Kol Nidre into this prayer musically not right at the beginning but somewhere in the middle i think you'll 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 hear it Tefilatein, Oh. 
There are then several litanies that we read. Some of them are team. We talked about those one week. A piyut is a liturgical poem, usually with some very specific poetic structure. Probably the most famous piyut in, in the Vidui is called a shamnu. Uh, it's an alphabetic acrostic. So the person who wrote it said, um, I'm going to think of a sin for every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Right, we've done little, we did exercise like this in elementary school, right? Where we had to maybe spell out our name and think of a, a good quality for each letter of our name. So they went one step further. They said, we're gonna find a sin for every single letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And, and this is the one often we will, we will wrap our chests um, as we sing this. Uh, and I'm not gonna sing that for you today, but that is one of the more famous ones. Um, another litany that's very popular in, in Vidui is called al Khait, al Khait, which says, for the sin of whatever it is, we ask for forgiveness. And it's a long, 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 long list of so many different sins. Of course, in our reform mock store, we've even come to incorporate perhaps modern things, things we hadn't thought about um, that the medieval rabbis were not thinking about as they didn't realize all of the, the all of the new ways we might find a sin in the 20th and 21st centuries. But at the very end of all of these litanies comes a prayer called Ve'al Kulam. And it's really um, in Judaism what we call a nechemta, um, sort of that moment of finding um, compassion at the very end that wraps everything up nicely because it can be very exhausting and very emotionally trying to go through all of the things that we need to ask for forgiveness for. So at the very end, it finally says, for all of these, and it has three verbs it uses, salach lanu, lanu, kaper lanu. So for those of you even who may be rudimentary Hebrew students, you might know the word lanu means for us or to us. So it says, Salah Lanu, forgive us, pardon us, and grant atonement to us. The most famous melody is the one I'm going to start with, uh, which is a, a very popular folk melody that um, many of you actually probably sang in your childhood even. It's been, it's been in Judaism probably since the late 19th century. Um, may not have been the tradition at your synagogue, but it's, I think a very popular melody. It goes like this. imagine maybe by nod head nods a, a familiar melody one that perhaps you probably don't even remember the first time you sang that melody um, but you know you've been singing it for a long time the next piece i'm going to share is actually a take on that same text but not on that same melody um, an interpretation of that vidui of that veal kulam um, mostly in english but also comes back to that refrain in hebrew this is by composer Michael Hunter Oakes. Um, probably the most famous thing we sing, though we sing a lot of his music at Temple Isaiah, is his um, O se shalom bim roma, hu ya se shalom alenu. Um, but this is a new setting. Uh, he just wrote actually this year. Uh, and so you'll be some of the first people to hear this. Uh, but I think it's, um, I love the English in it. I think it really forces us to do some really good work on ourselves in that cheshbon hanefesh, that accounting of our soul. Am I there for those who need me? Giving of my heart completely. 
Have I been caring and have I been patient? Have I forgiven without reservation? Do I take my days for granted? Treated others even handed and shown compassion to the homeless stranger? Have I been humble before my Creator? Ve'al kulam, ve'al kulam, Elohas lichot, ve'al kulam, ve'al kulam, ve'al kulam, Elohas lichot, Tread lightly on the planet. Have I held fast to your commandments? And have I raised my voice against injustice? Have I been giving or have I been selfish? May all kulam, may all Another contemporary setting is one we've actually been doing at Temple Isaiah since 2014. And this was a piece actually we commissioned uh, composer Josh Nelson to write um, that went with uh, a sermon actually that Rabbi Shanks gave back in 2014. And uh, it also incorporates Hebrew and English, but um, the third section is, um, I think was actually one of the main points of Rabbi Shanks' sermon, which is that what it says, you know, we have this symbolism throughout the holidays, right? Um, that the gates are closing, that we have this period of time by which we want to confess our sins. But the reality is Judaism says that the gates are never really closed. It's not to say that a period of time will pass that you cannot still ask for forgiveness. For the gates are always open, always open. And uh, that's a theme of this setting by Josh Nelson. I think it'll be familiar to many of you. We've done it um, for a while at some place. Uh, uh... Though we all have been hurt, though we all have hurt each other, let us all forgive. Let us all be forgiven, though we all have caused pain in our words to one another. Let us all forgive, let us all be forgiven.
regret for the words that we have spoken. Let us all forgive. Let us all be forgiven. Let now be the time to repair what has been broken. Let us all forgive. Let us all be forgiven. So I think we have time for one more melody, and I think um, I think I'm going to share with you a melody that also comes from the Kol Nidre service. Um, and um, if you were on, um, were some of you on Slichot services on Saturday night? Yes. So um, theoretically, you were supposed to hear this piece, but I understand this was the one piece that my mic was not on. Um, and you heard Daniel play probably a lovely accompaniment. So I'm going to share it with you now. Um, so if you missed it, and if you weren't there, now you'll get to hear it anyway. Uh, this is a setting of Or Zarua Latzadik U Yishre Lev Simcha. This is by composer Dan Nichols. Yeah, no, no. 
I wish you all a Shana Tova. Um, we're not going to be able to stay in Shmuz very much today because Rabbi Shank's class is starting in three minutes. But I so appreciate seeing all your faces. I so look forward to praying with you on Friday night and on Saturday. I hope you will sign up for our Rosh Hashanah car nival, our drive through <laughs> um, experience, a chance for us to greet each other, say Shana Tova. We have some gifts for you, and I hope you'll come and experience that as well. Shana Tova.